whether it be in the classroom, clinic, at work or in the gym. For decades, people have argued that lifting with a flexed spine is inherently bad for the health of someone's back. You've seen the pictograms and models showing what's supposed to be the safest and best way to lift an object, but is that really the case? In today's video, we want to take a look at recent research examining this exact topic. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Most of the research that is used as the argument against lifting with a flexed spine comes from animal models that showed higher potential of injury and degeneration when loading a spinal segment in a flexed versus in a neutral position. We can argue that these observations don't translate to a living and breathing human being whose tissues are able to adapt to loads they are exposed to. Also, as discussed in another video, lumbar disc degeneration is an inevitable and normal process of aging and the correlation to pain is poor. Secondly, while the backs in all those pictograms may appear to be straight, research has actually demonstrated that even when we try to perform lifts such as a deadlift or good morning with seemingly neutral spines, there's a substantial amount of flexion occurring, more than 20% of flexion actually. When we compare that to spinal flexion ranges in these in vitro models that were labeled as injurious, around 15 to 18 degrees, then it seems impossible to avoid risking a back injury despite our best efforts to stay neutral during lifting. But could a flexed position be beneficial? What? Recently, Marston et al. wondered how differences in lumbar spine postures influence trunk extensor strength, muscle activity, and neuromuscular efficiency during maximal lifting. In their study, they assessed 26 young, healthy, pain-free subjects. Their task was to generate maximal isometric force from a lifting position in three lumbar postures, extended, mid-range, and flexed, as seen in the pictures here. What they found was that lifting with a flexed lumbar spine resulted in significantly higher trunk extensor muscle moments as well as lower surface EMG activity compared to the extended and mid-range spine postures. Overall, the neuromuscular efficiency was highest in the flexed position, which, according to the authors, further questions why we are advocating so much against lifting with a flexed spine. However, Greg Lehman posted valid criticism about those conclusions on Twitter as comparing measured EMG amplitude across different muscle positions is flawed as this heavily influences EMG accuracy, especially as all trials required maximal effort by the participants, which you'd expect to result in maximal EMG readings as well. There's a great paper that we've linked in the description down below by Vygotsky et al, which discusses several flaws of EMG used in such studies. You can check it out in the description below. Marston and colleagues though reason that lifting with a flexed spine improves the length tension relationship of the erector spinae and benefits from elasticity of passive structures such as the posterior longitudinal ligament. Increased load on passive structures is often mentioned as an argument against lifting with a flexed lumbar spine as it may result in increased shearing forces and tissue creep. However, the authors reason that judging from the relatively small difference in EMG activity of the upper and lower erector spinae, the reliance on passive structures and risk of shear is most likely minimal. So, does this study add to the evidence that lifting with a flexed spine should not be discouraged and avoided at all cost? Yes, we admit the subjects in the study were young, healthy and pain-free. And lumbar flexion is often painful in patients with low back pain. But avoiding flexion entirely is thus a. anatomically not possible and b. apparently not efficient either. If spinal flexion hurts, then we can modify those symptoms by temporarily moving differently and as always we should gradually build up our tolerance to any repetitive movement, giving our body and tissues time to adapt. 
if you want to get some ideas on how you can reintroduce spinal flexion in patients hesitant to move into flexion, check out the video in the top right corner. Also, the way we move differs between individuals and is only one piece in the pain puzzle. All right, thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about assessing and managing conditions of the spine and SI joint, make sure to check out our online course on the spine. The link is in the video description down below. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Post any and all thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, this was Andreas for Physio Tutors. I will see you in another video. Bye.